Uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Horner. I'm with the Transportation Learning Network. You are joining us today for the webinar Self-Consolidating Concrete for Pre-Stress Bridge Girders, which was a Mountain Plains Consortium research project uh, numbered 17-334. So today's presentation, as you most of you know, is being hosted by the Transportation Learning Network, um, a program managed by Upper Great Plains Transportation Institute at North Dakota State University. And uh, TLN is a partnership of a pooling of Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming research, uh, resources, uh, the DOTs and their resources, North Dakota LTAP and the Mountain Plains Consortium Universities. Since we get research from those universities, I'm going to name them for this event. Um, we have in our, within the Mountain Plains uh, group, it's Colorado State University, North Dakota State University, South Dakota State University, University of Utah, University of Wyoming, Utah State University, University of Colorado Denver, and University of Denver. So we have quite a group there that generates research for the Mountain Plains Consortium. So now to our uh, topic and speaker. Again, our topic is self-consolidating concrete for pre-stressed bridge girders. If you, as you know from the announcement, uh, the presentation will cover research conducted by South Dakota State University under the MPC uh, program with additional funding from Wisconsin Department of Transportation. And again, self-consolidating concrete is high potential for being used for pre-stress girders to improve workability of the concrete and strength. <clears throat> and this presentation will cover how the, how the research was done and the recommendations made to Wisconsin DOT. Our presenter is Dr. John Wan So. He is a professional engineer and is an assistant professor at the Department of Civil Engineering at South Dakota State University and is a chairman of the ASCE Timber Bridges Committee. His areas of research expertise include structural health, monitoring, field testing, inspection of in-service bridges, and innovative bridge system development using advanced materials. And uh, he received his PhD in civil engineering from Pennsylvania State University and his master's in civil engineering from Georgia Institute of Technology. With that, I'm going to mute my, my uh, mic and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. So. Uh, please proceed. All right. Thanks for the introducing me, Tim. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Junon So and uh, I'm faculty member, as he's mentioned. Uh, today, I want to talk about the uh, finding from my PI project entitled self consolidating Concrete, uh, concrete, which is SCC for pre-stress bridge girders. Uh, this project was funded by the uh, Wisconsin DOT and MPC. So here is the presentation outline. I start with the uh, project objectives, uh, which are about the motivation of this project. Then I will get through the uh, the other agenda items in the order. For this project, we had uh, three objectives, which include the, uh, to develop SDC, which is a self consolidating concrete mixture design guideline for use of the SDC in PSC order on Wisconsin DOT bridge projects, and second to investigate the effect of the various SEC mixture uh, components on the uh, material characteristic such as the uh, slum floor, jading, and column segregation, and their compressive strengths. I want to talk about more detail later on. And the third, to investigate the uh, structural behavior of the full-scale pre-stress SEC girders uh, with the uh, focus on the uh, transverse length change in chamber and uh, pre-stress losses. Uh, to achieve the project objectives, we complete the uh, five tests, as you can see the, this slide. Um, task one, literature review. Task two, uh, identification of the SSC material supplier. Uh, you can see other tasks. Now I will talk about the other detail for each task. So for task one, we perform the uh, literature review to understand, in general, material characteristic of SEC. Uh, here is a, a, a fresh property slice, including stability, passing, and filling ability, and segregation. Uh, for example, passing and filling ability define that ability to flow through the uh, tight opening, such as the space 
between reverse under their own weight. Then we also review the document relates to the strength feature of the SEC. For instance, SEC has shown higher strength than the normal concrete and the cement contents and water cement ratio and coarse aggregate are the constituent that they have more influence on their compressed strengths. And SEC mixture using limestone fillers have shown substantial higher strengths than other mixtures. And you can see uh, other uh, features. And shrinkage is defined as the changes volume as concrete loses excess water, as, as you know. And some study have shown the normal concrete exhibit higher strain changes than SEC. And the cause of a sharing case, as you may know, low aggregate contents, high water cement ratio, and use of the HRWR, which is a high range water reducer. And uh, here's the creep features. As you know, creep is the volumetric changes due to external load. Uh, studies show that SEC may experience 10 to 20 percent more strain than the high performance concrete and the creep behavior is affected by the uh, compressive strength coarse aggregate cement types. In addition to the uh, literature review in task one, we also conduct the uh, survey uh, which are the distributes to the DOTs to determine desired fresh and the hardened properties of the SEC PSC gutters. So this table now I showing the DOT with the response and how they provide information to projects. For example, South Dakota DOT answer all the question of the survey and provide the relevant SEC specifications and the report. So now let's look at the uh, what question will include the uh, survey form. For example, question number one, does your state have a specific mixture parameter for the application of self constrained concrete? If yes, for what application have SSC been used? For example, others or bars curved. And question number two, describe the following material if used type of cement, what type of cement used, coarse aggregate size, fine aggregate and size, and the other material cement used or other material used, and you can see other you know, questions in the slides. And here's an example of the survey result from Virginia DOT. And uh, the question number one, Virginia DOT response, like the mixture parameter shall be designed with the same parameter as the uh, class concrete, with the different slum, slum the requirement and different the other mixtures, and used currently in bridges, beam, drill, shafter, and the uh, preset beam and precast items. And they allowed to use the uh, type three, and the, uh, they didn't use the other cement uh, materials, and they used the uh, coarse aggregate maximum three four inches, and they not any requirement for the fine aggregate, and they used the BMA, uh, which is a vis uh, viscosity modifying other mixtures, and they must meet the ACMC 494 and shrink and reduce the other mixture. And then they also limit to the maximum water cement ratio 0.45. And also, vernier DOT limits slum flow uh, 26 inches plus minus 3 inches and follows the other limit of the material feature such as J-ring flow of must be less than equal to two inches and you can see other information for the uh, requirement for the SEC mixtures. And then after collecting the survey results from the old participate DOTs on the survey, we summarize them in the table, this table and having five material characteristics, including slum flow, first column, slum flow, and jading, uh, VSI, and the L-box, and the column segregation. For example, 
Uh, South Dakota allows to the uh, SEC concrete girdle having slump flow range from 20 inches to 28 inches and jading range from the uh, plus minus 2 inches and the VSI which is visual stability index of the range of point, uh, 1 to the uh, 1 and the, uh, they didn't uh, uh, account for the L box and column segregation. You can see other DOT's requirement for the slump flow and others. After that, we present and discuss the survey result to Wisconsin DOT project panel, and we reflect the feedback from the project panel and decide the requirement for the extra mixture to be used the PSD girder for Wisconsin DOT. The finalized uh, rec uh, I mean the requirement for the SEC mixture can be seen in this slide. For example, initial strength must be equal to or more than 68. 100 PSI and after 28 days curing period, the strength must be more than equal to 8,000 PSI. And once we determine the requirement for the SC mixture, we move to task 2, which is the identification of local SC material supplier in Wisconsin. We select three plants, which are County Material Robert and County Material Janesville and spankrete. Each plant has different mixture component. As you can see, for example, spankrete used the cement type 3, uh, river gravel, and the Sika admixture. I can uh, talk about more detail for the each supplier. Let's see more detail here. Supply 1, uh, county material in Wisconsin. Uh, you can see the contact person and material to be used the uh, uh, Lafarge type 3 and the Janesville and Lafarge They've been poured type 1 and 2. And uh, they also use the fine aggregate, glacier sand, and coarse aggregate, 3 4 inches and 3 8 inches limestone. And they use admixture, including VMA and HRWR. Let's look at the uh, material information from the uh, supply 2 uh, material to be used. The same merits uh, type 3 and aggregate using the uh, fine aggregate Evan stone sand and the Evan stone river gravel and then they still they also use the uh, admixture provide the Sika BMA HRWR oh, sorry uh, okay so task 3 so once identify the supplier the supply provide the uh, material to be acid SDSU, our university, for their lab testing, which is the part of task 3. Uh, task 3 can be break down into the uh, two phases. Phase 1 is a lab testing, and phase 2 is a plant testing. So phase 1 lab testing includes uh, uh, fresh property testing, slum flow, jailing, column segregation, and the compressed strength 18 hours and 28 days curing. And phase 2, it's a planting testing, including creep test and shrink test. Also include the fresh properties and compressed strengths. So here is the phase one test pictures, uh, uh, test method. Uh, slum flow setup, you can see the uh, you know, left, left side and the, you can see the slum flow spread to measure the uh, diameter of the, uh, the slum spread. And uh, here is the picture for the uh, jailing setup and the uh, spread. And here is a picture for column segregation setup and the uh, sliding board to collect the top part of the uh, column segregations. And here's a picture uh, during the curing for the uh, concrete uh, specimen and the test for the compressed strengths. So once we establish the test method, also we establish the protocol, how you, we uh, make the workability, stability, and the strength stability specimen. So here's the protocol. First step is establish the test method, including J-ring and the uh, uh, slum flow. And then we set the, establish the workability criteria. J-ring, the uh, range should be 22 inches, 28 inches. And the, also we determine the uh, mixture parameters, what percentage uh, send aggregate ratio and the water cement ratio. 
and then we test it for the uh, fresh properties and then we analyze the data and then we uh, we get the uh, uh, promising or the satisfactory uh, mixture to meet the uh, workability satisfactory we go down the test for the hardening properties which is the uh, compress uh, compressive strength test for the 18 hours and the uh, 28 days and then we see the uh, uh, strength satisfactory we move to the uh, uh, evaluation time dependent material properties testing and this is the criteria to check uh, to see the uh, satisfactory of the mixtures so first uh, we prefer use the 800 pound per cubing yard as a sand aggregate 0.5 and water cement ratio 0.35 and we use the blend 3 4 inches 3 8 inch coarse aggregate using the uh, material from the uh, county materials and we use the two type of the cement type 1 and 2 and type 3 and the, this is the criteria uh, that uh, was used to um, identify the the most uh, satisfactory the mixtures so slum floor, you know, set uh, established between the accept range is 22 second and 28 inches and target value 25 inches and jading uh, uh, must be less than the uh, maximum 2 inches and the column segregate must be less than 15% and uh, the time is at 3, 10, 10 second and the uh, target value is a 6 second and the uh, VSI must be less than the 1 and the complete test target strength is 2800 PSI and 8000 PSI for the 28 days, as I mentioned before. And the, here's the test metrics. So we uh, used, as I mentioned, we used the two uh, plants, Janesville and Robert, and we have 12 mixtures. And each mixture uh, varied, depends upon the aggregate size, 100% eight, 3, 8 inches, and uh, mixture number two, for example, 80% uh, the uh, three eight and uh, the 20% three fourths inches, and uh, we use the cement type two uh, three and the water cement point three five and the uh, sand aggregate point five. So using the uh, test matrix, we conduct the uh, testing, and we got the result. So as you can see the table, we have the 12 mixtures. And then we found the, uh, the slum flow and the T20 jading column segregation and the 18 compressed strengths. And uh, we realized that number 2, 4, 5, 6, and 10 has the um, uh, satisfactory strengths, which is the, uh, uh, greater than the uh, uh, 6,800 PSI. So also we uh, show that result in the graph and uh, the results show, indicate that mixture having 60%, 80% of the eight, 3 fourths inches aggregate provide exceptional uh, workability and compressive strengths. Uh, so we, uh, we do one more time uh, to the uh, fresh uh, fresh property test with the six uh, percent and eighty percent of the threefold aggregate. So here's a result uh, for the additional testing uh, with the uh, only sixty and eighty percent threefold inches. And uh, you can see uh, the result. Uh, for example, number one we used the 60% 3 4 inches and uh, the result set the slum flow of the 24.75 which is close to 25 inches and the uh, jading 23.5 and the column segment 2.1% and the, uh, the compressed strength is 7000 over 7000 psi and the uh, 8750 Uh, once we finish the uh, phase one of the test, we move on the uh, phase two. So we test the uh, mixture uh, from the one, two, four, six, nine, 
and adjust the uh, admixture dosages to improve the workability between the uh, December 15 and the uh, January 2016. And we visit each plant on February the 9th, 12th, the, uh, 2016, and French property tests were performed. And uh, we <clears throat> also create the uh, crib and shrinkage samples and the trend to the SDSU facilities and monitor changes in train in the period of one year. So here is a picture for the testing and the casting of the creep and the shrinkage. And uh, first we placed the SEC and uh, we did slump, slump spread and also we conduct the uh, <clears throat> column segregation again with that one, one, two, four, six, nine, and also we also conduct the jailing test. Here's picture for the uh, Jane spill and slum spread and the jailing test and the column segregation and the aggregate and the uh, SS is showing segregation. You can see the pictures, and here's the span crit. Also, we repeat the, uh, the test uh, at the span creep plant, and uh, we make the uh, uh, make the specimen for the creep and shrinkage. You can see the shrinkage freeze. And then here is a result uh, showing us the uh, uh, slum flow of fresh properties and column segregation and the uh, complex strength, 18 hours, 20 days for the uh, number one, two, four, six, nine. <clears throat> well, you can see uh, number one through six, one, two, four, six has the uh, little bit less than the uh, target value of the uh, complex strings. The reason why that the uh, counting material robot and counting material Jane's bill, uh, they place the, uh, the cylinder in the a uh, uh, little bit uh, outside the uh, encoder curing uh, chambers. So that's why we expect a little bit lower uh, complex strengths. Uh, Spankrete, on the other hand, Spankrete has very carefully um, uh, carefully placed the uh, QLD uh, concrete and you, you can see the uh, higher uh, complex strengths 18 hours. And also you can show the uh, shrinkage prism. Uh, there's a two set of the shrinkage prism. One set from the uh, plant uh, and the, uh, the other one uh, made from the uh, SDSU. So we made the two set, one from plant and the other one is the, from the uh, SDSU facilities. And when you see the picture, so white one is the uh, plant and the uh, little bit darker 15 prism made with the uh, uh, SDSU. And we compare the you know, difference between the uh, uh, shrink strain uh, uh, manufacture, I mean, fabricate from the uh, the plant and the SDSU facilities. And here's a crib, uh, 15 cylinder. For the uh, crib uh, testing, we just the, uh, we just fabricate crib uh, specimen at the plant only. And uh, my graduate student measure the uh, crib uh, strain, as you can see bottom bottom of the uh, you know slice. And then here's a, here is the uh, shrinkage result for 8, 28, and then 280 days. And then as you know, we select the uh, mixture 1, 2, 4, 6, 9. And then you can see the 20-day measurement, plant and lab. There's uh, some different plant and lab. And also you can see the difference, the uh, 28 days measurement. And also we show the uh, 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 strain, shrinkage strain for the, uh, using the graph. Uh, showing the uh, mixture two, as the time increased, the uh, shrinkage of course increased, and also we compare the uh, lab and the uh, plant shrinkage result uh, with the uh, Ashto uh, equation and the a ACI. You can see the similar trend uh, between the Ashto ACI in the lab and the plant on the. I'm talking about the uh, the, the the graph on the right side on the this slide. But the but ACI is the overestimate, and the uh, lab and plant is the underestimate the uh, as to ACI. And 
and here's the creep result. We measure the uh, creep the uh, uh, strain up to the uh, 208 days, and uh, you can see the table. The time we measure 28, 56, 84, and 112 and 280. And uh, as I said, we have uh, five mixtures, and uh, you can see the some difference. The creep result also I select the uh, one mixture, which is mixture two, as showing the uh, the figure. And uh, each mixture, actually, I didn't mention the each mixture has the uh, three cylinders, and then we uh, average them to showing the, in the table, and. Uh, for the uh, the graph, we showing the uh, different uh, the uh, data point for the cylinder one through three and the average, and also we compare the result uh, against the uh, ASTO ACI, and uh, <clears throat> uh, as anticipate, the uh, plant is the underestimate the uh, ASTO. and based on the uh, analysis of the data. And uh, the feedback from the uh, technical project the panel, we established SCC mixture design specifications. So, for example, the self concentrating concrete specification materials, the water cement ratio 0.35 or less, and the cement contents 800 pound cubing yard, and sand to aggregate ratio. 0.5 or less, and course exercise is the uh, maximum of the three four inches and blending is allowed the three eight inches gradation allowed the forty percent, and the total uh, course aggregate, and you can see the other detail in the uh, uh, the mixed design specification in this uh, slide. After that. Uh, we must choose the uh, one most uh, most uh, promising uh, mixtures to causing the worst scenario, which is the having the substantial uh, compressive uh, uh, substantial the preset losses. So we choose mixture four among the uh, mixture one, two, four, six, nine, and then we use the mixture four to fabricate bridge gutter. Uh, and uh, as you can see the detail for the bridge gutter, and you can see the picture when we complete the pouring the concrete, SCC concrete in the, uh, the gutter. And the, the, I want to talk about the, the reason why I choose the mix of four uh, for the full scale testing. As I mentioned here, the first, second highest creep and shrinkage strain resulting in a significant amount of pressure losses. When you look down the other table, the number four and number nine uh, provide the height creep and shrinkage strain. So we expect to see a significant amount of pre-stress losses, which is pretty bad, which is the worst scenario. That's why we choose a mix of four and mix of four and nine. But thing is, uh, county material uh, was willing to offer the uh, fabricate the gutter, so we select the uh, number four. As you know, number five is the manufactured by the uh, Spankrit. And here's a uh, gutter mixture detail. To uh, for the uh, SCC gutter, uh, following the uh, the established the uh, SCC mixture guideline, we choose the cement eight hundred cubing yard and fine aggregate 1503 and coarse aggregate yeah, 616 and coarse aggregate 905 and the water 31.6 gallon and you also to compare the SEC uh, structure performance uh, against the, uh, the those from the uh, CC gutter we also fabricate the uh, normal concrete gutter you can see the, the detail for the uh, mixtures for the uh, CC gutter For task five, uh, we focus on the uh, investigate structural behavior of the SCC and the uh, normal concrete. Uh, in order to do that, in uh, to the end, we measure the uh, transfer length in the SCC and normal concrete gutter, and measure precess losses induced by the uh, creep and shrinkage effect. Also, we measure camber changes. 
So here's a gauge installation for the uh, transfer length. As you know, there's two ways to measure the uh, transfer length. Uh, we choose the uh, we choose the one uh, promising the methodology to the determine the transfer length. We install the uh, strain gauges at the bottom of the uh, strain. As you can see, the selected strain. And we attach the uh, the gauges, as you can see the the picture at the bottom. And uh, we uh, locate the uh, sensor six uh, inches away from the uh, edges and the uh, support, and twelve inches and six inches, twelve inches, twelve inches, twelve inches. As you can see the side view of the girder. And then. We also need to measure the press losses. So we use the mechanical uh, strain gauges, uh, gauges to put in the at the middle of the uh, uh, middle of gauges. Uh, I am in the uh, the gauges in the middle of the gutter, vibrating wire gauges, and then we uh, we conduct the long term. Uh, long-term strain gauges. Uh, we measure the long-term strains. And before for the uh, SEC concrete, we test for the, uh, we conduct the uh, quality controls and the uh, Wisconsin DOT uh, uh, technical panel and the, uh, me and the grad student uh, evaluate the, uh, we conduct again the mixture number four of the J ring and the uh, slump flow and the column segregation and also the chief the uh, material uh, Wisconsin DOT material uh, panel investigate the uh, the v, uh, VSI and uh, I remember I we did the uh, twice or three times to conduct the uh, SEC mixture quality quality control before we pour the, uh, the concrete in the uh, the uh, the form. So here's the picture. Uh, we look down the uh, the uh, after after uh, completing the uh, slum floor test of the mixture four before the fabricating the concrete uh, eye gutter. And uh, once the implementation, we inspect uh, the surface of the uh, SC gutter and the CC gutters. And um, as you can remember the uh, SEC gutter takes only few minutes uh, and then there is uh, doesn't require any the uh, vibrator and the uh, SEC concrete require the uh, using the uh, vibrator to smoothly okay uh, the cement goes out on the uh, the bottom of the uh, concrete the foam and also once we inspect the uh, gutter and then there's uh, some the uh, 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 bug holes on the SCC gutter. On the other hand, there's an, uh, not visual, visible the uh, the bug holes in SCC gutters. And here's the transfer length uh, result. Uh, we measure after release. We measure the uh, transfer length after release for the uh, SCC gutter and the CC gutter, and also we measure the uh, transfer length at the uh, 28 days. You can see uh, uh, SEC got has the uh, 19 inches transfer length and 20 inches transfer length. On the other hand, the SEC has a little bit higher uh, than the SEC uh, length uh, 24 and 24.5. And also we compare the result uh, to the ASHTO and the ACI. Uh, we got we got the uh, the smaller, uh, I mean the uh, uh, a smaller value than the H to ACI. Also, you can see the graph to CC and SEC. And also, we measure the uh, press losses for one day, day seven, day one, twenty one hundred sixty one. Um, and before shipping and after shipping, after placement, after deck placement, and uh, day 203 and day 287. So as you know, CC and SEC, uh, not much difference uh, one day. And uh, also at the end of the day of the uh, monitoring, day 287, you can see very, uh, I mean, 
the place losses of the uh, CC and SEC is almost identical. Uh, and uh, the day one, the uh, place losses caused by the LS short team, as you know, and the after, you know, apply the forces, you expect the, uh, some, you know, losses due to the uh, creep shrink and relaxation. And uh, before shipping and before after and the placement, you expect the losses during the construction. And the day after that placement, we expect still some losses due to the encryption and relaxation. Also, we summarized that the uh, priest losses in the graph and the priest losses versus time. And then you can see the same trend between the CC and SCC. And also, we showed the uh, priest forces per strain before shipping and after shipping at the bottom of the, uh, this slide. And also we measure, uh, take a measurement of the camber and uh, after, right after the release day one, and then we get the, uh, the, the camber 0.662 and the, uh, for the CC gutter and we get the 0.5 SCC gutter. And also we keep, uh, kept the uh, monitoring of the uh, camber as we did the uh, presurosis up to the uh, 161. Also, we uh, summarize the data into the uh, the graph, camber versus time, and then we can see the uh, similar trend between the CC and SCC uh, in terms of the camber, and SCC has the uh, little bit more the uh, camber changes, but but we can see the similar result. And uh, here's uh, once we, uh, during the uh, measurement of the uh, camber and the uh, press losses, also, also we implant the gutters. So here's a picture uh, when you transport the, uh, the gutter from the, uh, the plant to the uh, bridge site. And the, uh, the second figure at the bottom on the left side, the, uh, we measure the pre-stress losses using the strain gauges, uh, by vibration strain gauges, and uh, we erect the gutter to the uh, uh, as one of the uh, the gutters, uh, bridge gutters, and uh, you can see the mark SCC on the right side. And uh, here is the uh, the picture uh, deck placement. And we successfully uh, completed this test, and then we pulled the uh, deck. And uh, before deck placement, we uh, measured the uh, uh, precious losses, as I mentioned. So I summarized what we found so far uh, from this project. The first slump flow results show the uh, between all twelve mixtures range twenty. 2.8 inches to 26 inches. And the, uh, the majority of the mixture were less than the maximum passing ability 2 inches, excluding mixture 5, consisting of 20% 3.8 inches coarse aggregate. And the uh, complex strengths of the old mixture range from 5,000, over 5,000, to the uh, over 8,000 PSI. And the uh, one half the uh, mixture, mix mixtures and mixture 2, 4, 5, 6, 10, and 11 exceed the required complex strengths. And uh, here's a conclusion for the uh, material plant testing. And flesh and hardened properties, all the mixture for Robert acceptable based on the requirement that we established uh, by discussing uh, the result with the uh, technical panel. And the performance was uh, considered acceptable all the uh, Jane's bill the mixture in terms of fresh hardening properties and the passing abilities are uh, all span cream mixture were not as optimal as the as those the uh, obtained from the mixture from Robert Dane's plant. For hardening properties, especially mixture eight and ten did not reach the required complex strength at the uh, eighteen hours, as I mentioned before, due to the uh, inappropriate curing period. And the conclusion, the result from the uh, creep testing Creep behavior for the uh, all three cylinder for each mixture was generally similar, although one mixture the uh, different creep value. Mixture nine exhibit high steel creep strain, a value of the uh, fourteen forty mic strain, while mixture two exhibit the lowest creep, showing the uh, ten ninety four micro strain. 
and the cryptia model specified the HCI code overestimate as I showed the figure and crypt coefficient for the five mixture while ash to slightly underestimate them. And the shrink testing, uh, here's the uh, conclusion for shrink testing. Uh, shrink value for all the mixture range from 470 to 900 microstrain at the uh, 20, 208 days. And ash to model provide more accurate uh, predict shrink at the end of 208 days for all the mixture compared to ACI model. And here's the conclusion for the press losses. Less shortening for the SEC order was the 9.07 KSI, while the SEC order was approximately 70% larger than the value 10.61 KSI. And the final preset losses for the SEC order was 8.53 KSI, near 33% higher than the that of the SEC order, equal to 6.42 KSI. And we saw the, uh, some construction losses, 2.22 KSI for the SEC and 1.9 KSI for normal concrete. For total press losses explained by each order were 16.89 and the 70.03 uh, CC orders. And the one interesting finding is from the press losses measurement, the press losses continue climb until day 161, which is the order is shipped to place on site. And uh, the point the the point the uh, losses slowly start to the uh, decline on until the uh, final recording date 287. And here is the result for the uh, transverse lengths. And we saw the transverse lengths of the 19 inches for SEC gutter and 24 inches for the normal concrete gutter. And uh, at 20 days, transverse lengths increased for both gutters. Um, uh, specifically, SCC order increased 1 inches to final value 20 inches, while the CC order increased 0.5 inches only. And uh, we compare, as I said, the, uh, we compare the result against the ASHTO ACI, and uh, we got the ASHTO trend length of the uh, 36, and the uh, ACI uh, has the trend length of the 30 inches. And both codified formulas um, that consider sufficient and conservative, which is good. And here's the conclusion for the chamber. So for the chamber, the variation of the chamber was the 1.63 inches for SEC gutter, while 1.38 inches for the CC gutter. And final reading for each gutter record the 4 5 inches. However, this value as is order at day 91, while the CC order didn't reach this until day 126 day. And uh, the SCC order climbed to peak camber <coughs> faster than the CC order, which is interesting. We started with a higher value, but it took longer to reach the peak. So we made the uh, according to the uh, discussion and the uh, I mean the uh, the all the result and conclusion uh, with the uh, technical panel we made the recommendations uh, <clears throat> as follows. So Wisconsin DOT uh, should allow the implementation of the precise SCC bridge orders, and the mixture four that we use uh, for this project should be accepted by Wisconsin DOT for order production without repeating all the testing provided in the proposed ST mixture design specification because we already test we demonstrate the effectiveness of the mixture four in terms of the workability and compress strengths and the creep and shrinkage and press losses etc. And the uh, special provision should be developed to set performance requirement for the fabrication of precess bridge girders. And here's the uh, continued recommendations. So investigations of the implementation supplement uh, cementous material to reduce the cost as the mixture should be made 
make it more feasible local producer. As you know, we, we didn't use any other cementary material. We didn't use the fly ash, whatever. So we just choose the 800 uh, cubing yard, 100 cubing yard for the uh, cement. So we recommend uh, to use the uh, other uh, materials, uh, cementaries materials, rather than the uh, only using the uh, cement. And the, uh, the last recommendation <clears throat> was that the monitoring of the larger full-scale SCG order is recommends to the obtain valuable information, long-term structural behavior SCG orders. <clears throat> so based upon their result and findings, uh, we made uh, some future work. Uh, First, uh, we need to modify the SC mixture design for better control creep and shrinkage. So mixture 4 and mixture 9 has the substantial creep and shrinkage strain. So we would like to uh, further research, uh, modify the SC mixture to reduce the uh, creep and shrinkage strain. And uh, second feature work is investigating shear strengths or post-cracking uh, share performance of the uh, pre-stressed order bridge order uh, with the different pre-stressing forces and making relevant design recommendation. The reason why there's a lack of the information, share strengths of the uh, pre-stressed SCC bridge order. So we need to investigate that. And uh, the third one, establishing the uh, comprehensive pre-stressed uh, pre SCC bridge order design guideline by performing represent load testing first scale SCC order and prime study with the variation, order size, strength, pressure forces, and losses. And two more the future work uh, are the uh, examining long-term structural behavior SCC order bridges under the uh, service load. And uh, we have an investigate the, uh, any uh, distribution of the uh, live load to the H order. So it's worthwhile for us to the, investigate the uh, live, live load distribution factors and uh, develop the, uh, the more rational <coughs> LLDF formula uh, comparable to the uh, ASHTO. And uh, as I mentioned, this project funded by the uh, MPC and Wisconsin DOT, I really appreciate the support. And uh, <clears throat> I also uh, appreciate the, my graduate student, Eduardo William, helped a lot to uh, uh, complete a successful uh, this project. Also, I thank to the uh, William Oliver and the uh, James Perro and the uh, Oliver and the Steve and the Oli and all and team and Rita. And also, I appreciate the, uh, the support from the uh, Wisconsin Madison, I mean, department, civil and department at the Wisconsin Madison and the South Dakota State University. And I thanks to the uh, county material and spankrete provide the uh, donate the uh, material and the provide uh, fabricate the, the SSC orders. All right, here is uh, that's all I have and. Uh, if you have any question, let me know. Uh, Dr. Dr. So, uh, Tim here, um, yes. uh, and to the group, I encourage you to, again, insert any questions into the, uh, into the Q&A section down there. A few questions. Uh, first of all, I haven't, I haven't looked at Astral Bridge Design or ACI specs in a long time. Do they have um, anything for SEC used in pre-stressed uh, beams? Uh, any type of specification guidance in there? Uh, uh, I we need to check. I just okay. yeah, look into the uh, you know DOT's uh, report and the uh, the state level the uh, uh, specifications. But H two and ACI provide the uh, predict the losses of the okay. normal concrete, not especially SEC. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. they, 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 you're saying that they, uh, they uh, give creep loss uh, calculation um, yes. numbers, but not specific to SCC. Is that what uh, that's what I, you know, that's mm -hmm. what I feel, but I need to double check. Okay, yeah, and, and I think that they may not have anything specific to it. I, I don't uh, think so, because as you know, I completed the uh, survey and the, uh, the right. project uh, two almost three years ago. So 
maybe I have to adopt a new uh, spec for the SEC, but at the time, uh, we don't have the uh, specific, you know, mm-hmm. requirement from the ASTO ACI for SEC concrete preset order fabrications. Okay. So, um, for the beams themselves, what what compressive strength or design strength was uh, was used, uh, and then and how does that compare? Then then I can compare that to the uh, to the values that you got for compressive strength. Were, was it uh, say a six thousand psi twenty eight? Yeah. Day, right. As, yeah, as I mentioned, the initial strength after you know uh, eighteen hours curing, uh, sixty eight a hundred psi that recommended mm-hmm. by the Wisconsin DOT. Also. Uh, we did the uh, survey uh, to know the uh, what other you know DOTs uh, established okay. the uh, complex strength. They some South Dakota you know set established the 500 per side, right? But the, uh, we could the would like to increase more initial strengths. So we used the uh, 16800 psi and the uh, 20 days at least uh, you know complex strengths uh, should be uh, more than 8000 psi. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and which are high values uh, for yeah. stress beams, and because uh, I don't know if they're that high in our area, but I'm out of date a bit. Um, the mm-hmm. the creep test in how more detail on how that's performed. Were you, did you cure that to uh, a 28 day or such a, a certain amount of time, and then add a compressive strength equal to the design compression? Um, uh, how was that test done? Uh, for the uh, creep testing? Yep. Uh, let me try to remember. Uh, I think uh, we decide the, uh, the, uh, the load. We, we, I think we decide the uh, 2,000, I think, okay. 2,000 uh, for compressed okay. forces to uh, substantially apply the uh, creep, uh, creep, pres- uh, creep cylinders. Okay, and uh, I got the uh, reference from the uh, the past Viscon DOT project report, and they recommend the uh, apply the uh, two thousand. Okay, two thousand uh, pounds. Uh, yeah, thousand pounds. Yes, two thousand okay. pounds. Right. And then once you apply, the, we take the measurement of the creep. Uh, every I think uh, right after right after applying the forces, and then we measure six hours. Until one week, and then after one week, we measure, take a, took a measurement the, uh, every week until the uh, one month, I guess. But mm-hmm. I need to double check the uh, report. Uh, uh, my grade student the, uh, took a measurement. Uh, that's what I, you know, remember. I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, that that's good information. Uh, the uh, the, the camber. <laughs> it se- did did you do multiple beams there? And because it, it seems. You know, my memory of uh, pre-stressed uh-huh. beams, they vary even when using conventional concrete and quite a bit. That was a very small amount of camber variance, I, I would assume. Is that what you assume too? Yes, that's we assume. That's why we compare the camber between the normal concrete and SC gutter. And uh, you can see the, uh, you know, CC gutter has a more uh, smaller, right? A little bit smaller the, you know, camber, right? Right. It was yeah. The conventional was less. And, yeah, uh, conventional less, and this is a little bit higher. And uh, that's what you expect. And uh, yes. Okay. So uh, I think I had one other question. Transfer length. I had not heard that before. Was that pretty challenging to do the transfer length? Uh, and did you do you? How did you perform that test again? Well, actually, transfer length is the we measure by uh, strain gauge readings. Okay. And uh, uh, transfer length is uh, typically used uh, for the design the plastic others. So if the uh, transfer length is the uh, higher than the uh, the ash toe, the limit, that we concerned about it. That's why we compare the uh, the measure uh, measure the uh, transfer length versus the ASTO ACI. Mm-hmm. So, but good thing is the uh, both the uh, SCC order and the CC order the uh, conservatives rather than the ASTO ACI. So, which is good. Okay, and the transfer length is 
it's the development length for the tendon I take it. it, it That's true. Development length, development length for reinforcing steel is, you know, is, is huh. so, so many diameters. And then you're calculating the development length for the tendon. That's what that transfer length is. Am I correct about that? Yeah, you're right. Uh, and then I want to look at the uh, report to get the uh, more information. I will let you know the uh, triple lengths. About yeah. It. Yeah. That's good info. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just trying to reconstruct. It's been many years since I looked at uh, yes. beam design. Um, anyway, uh, I'm not seeing any questions, and I want to thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Yeah.